Normally, I don't like to vlog in my pajamas, but happy Sunday morning, everybody. It's July 26th, I think. I don't know what time it is, but did you see the clip before this one? Yeah, there's a big buck right outside the windows here behind me, outside of our game room. Like, literally, like, what, four feet from the house? Yep. Eating my, eating my bushes, but still, he was a pretty pretty dear. So anyways, he was having his morning breakfast while we're finishing our morning coffee. Anyway, happy Sunday morning. I'll be back. Hey guys, it's 3.51 p.m., still Sunday. Um, didn't do much this afternoon. We went. We did go for a walk um, when Bob got back from the gym. I'll show you the dye progress in a minute. We're gonna let them soak until tomorrow morning and then I'll take them out and rinse them and let them air dry. I'm gonna shake them up a little bit more. Um, we'll talk about those in a minute. But I was working on this. So I have a favorite nightgown. Um, that's comfy, basically like loose tank top style. I have trouble picking out nightwear that I like that's not like super expensive. Like I don't just don't see the point in spending $50 on a nightgown. Um, so I thought, let me take my favorite one and let me make a pattern from it and then use like knit scraps to make a mock-up, which I did. Obviously I used scraps, if you can see this. this. That wasn't on purpose and it doesn't match from the front to the back. Um, the lines are in a different place. Um, but um, I did squeeze uh, one mock-up out of two of the same kind of knits. And so it's a mock-up I can actually wear and it fits the way I want it to. So yay, um, I am going to sift through some of my knit scraps. I have a lot, I probably don't need to keep every scrap, but and I have a bag of scraps hanging on the door. So I'm gonna do that next. Um, and I have some knit fabric on order, which I hate to do and I hesitated doing, but right now I'm just not comfortable going out to the store looking around for fabric. In the midst of a pandemic, it's not time for that, I don't think. So anyway, I um, got the mock-up done, yay, and I can wear it and it's all good and it's surged and yeah, pretty happy with that. So let me show you the, the dye, um, that's the fabrics that are soaking in the homemade dyes and we'll talk about each one and the progress and I'll be right back. That's the sage and rusty metal. It's turning out a really pretty sort of gray color. This is the wild blackberries. And can you see how red that's turning? Um, Trying not to like spill it Ironing anywhere. board cover too, but that's okay. This is the roses. Nice dark dusty pink color. Now this is the beets. Now in the beets I said yesterday that I thought, or, well yesterday, yes, last week's vlog, that I thought the water came out a little bit more brown than it was red that I was hoping for because I cooked the beets in the way that you would cook them if you were gonna eat them rather than just cut them up to get the color out. But when I was done cutting them so my husband could eat them, because he likes beets, I hate beets, fun fact. Um, I took all the peelings and everything and the icky bits and I put them into little tea bags and I let them steep in the water overnight, both in the beet water and in the beet stem water. And they did turn much more red. They're not as red as the blackberries, but that is a lot more red than it was. And then this is the beet stem water, which is very pink. And then this is the um, cabbage water, very purple, which is really cool. 
dyeing fabric is very messy, but very cool. So anyway, that's the progress today and we will see in a couple of days when they're all rinsed and dried and yeah, I usually let them sit for 24 hour to 48 hours and you know, give them a chance to soak up as much color as they can before I rinse them and then let them dry. So I'll check back in with you in a couple of days. Hey guys, have I vlogged yet today? I don't think so. It's Monday, July 27th maybe, hang on. Yes, 27th, it's just before lunch. I've been editing the vlog for last week all morning and I am filling another purge box. This time this is a large flat rate box. Yeah. Um, I just purged two bins of mark making tools, mostly found objects and homemade things. Uh, purged them down to one. Um, if you collect homemade mark making tools for art journaling or jelly printing, you know that at some point your collection gets a little out of hand. So I find every few years I need to purge it because it just gets ridiculous and this year's that year. So I'm going to fill up this box. I'm going to um, show you on camera what I'm putting in it. I am going to speed through the process a little bit and the listing for the box will be in the video description. I am also next going to do a punch box. So let's get started, shall we? Most of what I need to get done, done today, except I still haven't done the writing for Facebook for the week and scheduled posts out that I do normally in the art groups over there. And I still have to rinse out and set out to dry the fabric and twill tape that we um, started experimenting with over the weekend. 
So, but first I just did the dishes and I'm gonna go check the mailbox. I have to mail, stick a bill in the outgoing mail. I have a bunch of other mail that's gotta go too, um, including an Etsy order, but it's too big to put in the house box. So I'm gonna just go down and it doesn't have to go out until tomorrow. So I'm gonna go just down to check my PO box and mail it at that time, like in the morning. Um, so let me go get the mail done. Let me put my snap pea chips away. <laughs> And then we'll get back upstairs and get the rest of today's work done. Okay. Oh my goodness, you're not gonna believe the results and they're not even dry yet. And I'm so excited on the fabric dyeing thing. Let me, um, I've got them on my drying rack here, but let me temporarily move them to the table under the light so you guys can see. And let's talk about the results that we got. It's pretty interesting. And I do have one more um, round of fabric and trimmings in each one of the colors, which is what I've been doing um, with all of the colors. Some of them I did way too much of it, so I put it in some of the purge boxes. Um, but yeah, anyway, and I am saving the leftover dye. We'll talk about all that in just a second. That's all six of the new colors that we made. The beets. I do think um, next time I'm going to boil the beets without the peels on. I'll peel them first and then slice them or cube them and then boil them and I'll use a co regular cooking food pot then the husband can still eat them but I think I might get more red color out of them but I don't know we'll see and then I'm going to show you this one first this is the beet stems so beet root beet stems and in each one of the dye waters like I said in the vlog last week I put some of the peelings and things when I was done peeling and slicing the beets into each of the waters. This one definitely got more red than it was, but it's still a reddish pinkish brown. This one looks like warm coffee to me. And then this one is the roses, red and pink roses, which this one and that one are very similar. So if you want like a dusty pink, if you have roses, but you don't have beets and or you don't like beets, you don't like the smell of them, you could do one or the other. This here, this is a wild blackberries. Somebody said they got blue when they do it. I didn't get blue, but wow, is that a pretty color. Okay, and then this one is the sage and rusty metal. It definitely, per the notes I had that I was working with, said it would be a grayish green. That definitely is a grayish green. It's a pretty color. It's like a khaki green. It'll probably change, these will probably all change color a little bit as they dry, so we'll have to see, check back and see. This is the red cabbage. Now I will tell you this print was a white on white print. So the background fabric where the printing was not dyed this dark reddish blue, well, bluish purple. But the print where the printing where the white ink was, look how blue that came. Very cool. So I'll be doing homemade inky dye things now that I'm running out of containers. So for doing the initial dye, I like to use these big ish, except for that one, which has a small mouth. The rest of them are wide mouth containers. So I can do the initial um, dye run in these. Um, they're very large and they don't leak generally. And um, it's easy to get your hand in and out of it to get the fabric out um, and or fabric in. So I do sort of rinse these out, wash them out and reuse them. But then when I'm not dyeing with the water that's in here, I put them in a smaller bottle, like these old barbecue sauce bottles, um, gel gelato containers, like I have a mismatched sort of hodgepodge over here of containers. At some point, I'm going to have to, um, I would like to have all containers like this. So I might need to, I don't know, make a trip to um, tap plastics or something. It would be nice to have something with this like flip top lid with an opening there that I can just dump a little bit of the, shake the dye up and then dump a little bit like into a bowl with a piece of paper or twill tape and let it soak for a bit and then, you know, seal the thing back. These would be ideal. So I might have to make a trip over there. We'll see if they're open, what hours they're open. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to let all this dry. And yes, when you're doing this, when you're doing the rinsing out part and you're messing with some of these colors, you should wear gloves. I have my apron on. Some of these, although they're all food-based colors for the most part, except for the sage with rusty metal. It's got rusty metal in it. Um, 
Like anybody who's cooked beets or blackberries know that shit can stain your, stain your hands. So I had gloves on up until like a minute ago. So wear gloves and all of that stuff. And if you have white sinks like I do, um, you know, you need to have all your containers set up nearby for the rinsing process and your trays to lay stuff out on and your cleaning supplies for the sink right away. So you, right away you wash that sink out so you don't stain your sink. So anyway, there's some tips for you. All right, that's it for the moment. I'll be Morning, back. everybody. It is Tuesday, July 28th, I think. 8.58 a.m. I'm headed down to our little post office um, that I think is still open, uh, maybe. Uh, not the main. What time is it? 3.39 p.m. We did our live broadcast this morning. I, I like to stay on somewhere around an hour and a half, less than two hours. So um, we started a um, slow stitch meditation journal page. I didn't finish it on camera. Um, they usually take longer than even two hours to do. I do like to kind of take my time. Um, I'll go upstairs here and show you what I did. That air conditioner's on, if you hear that sort of roaring in the background. Um, so I did finish it and I got it pasted into the journal. So that that's it finished. For those who were watching me on the broadcast and wanna see what it looked like done, there it is. I am posting pictures tonight on social media. So if you wanna know my social media links, look in the video description. There should be specific links and there should be also a link to a site called Linktree, which has all of my places you can find me on the internet. Anyway, I also caught up my, where did I put it? Oh, there it is. <laughs> my fabric dyed experiment journal. Um, my fabric coloring experiments journal. Hold on, I just filmed all that and the camera wasn't on. Um, okay, so yeah, that's where we left off last time. So this is the blackberries, the beetroot, which I boiled the beets as if you were going to eat them with the skin on and then sliced them afterwards um, and put them in, set them aside, put them in a, dish, in a dish. My husband likes beets. I took the peels and the stems and the icky bits put them in the water that the beetroot was cooking in, and this is the color that I got. I'm thinking next time I might try peeling the beets raw la raw, slicing them up, and then boiling the slices um, without the peel on and see how much more color comes out of them. This is the beetroot and uh, leaves and stems. The red and pink roses the sage and rusty metal. It's a really pretty gray green. And the red cabbage, which is really pretty. So yeah. Hey guys, good morning. I don't know what time it is. It's Wednesday, June 29th. Pretty sure. What time is it? Let's see. Computer won't wake up. I don't know. Oh, there we go. It's 10:29 a.m. I just filmed my two videos for August. I'm only going to do two besides the vlog for August, um, and then we're going to do some live broadcasts. Um, July has been a busy filming month, and so after the 30 and 30 project, I think I'm going to take a little break from filming and lighten up my load a little bit and see what happens with the YouTube channel. Um, we are doing the live broadcast, so I'm, I'm sure you guys will all be fine with that. But anyway, I have Etsy orders. I've got to go walk down to the mailbox, and I've got some more fabric soaking in behind the camera. 
that I need to pull out and rinse at some point this afternoon. I am going to do some watercoloring, I think, today. I'm going to start on the Lips Journal, um, which is like right over there. And I am going to go through all of these. I've got, this is resin, molded resin. I was using up some old resin and some pigment powders. And then I had these two besides, which are a combination of clay, um, different kinds of clay. This is like paper clay um, and resin and some polymer clay. Um, I don't need three bins of molded embellishments. That's just crazy town. And so I'm going to get these down to ideally one bin, but maybe two. And um, I'm going to purge today. I'm going to probably package up the excess into little packages for um, Etsy. I may just do the lazy thing and I may just fill a small priority mailbox.
morning everybody it's thursday morning july 30th yes i almost said june <laughs> um anyway i'm headed out i've got some stuff i need to mail and a couple of errands to run i'd rather do them this morning than over the weekend or later in the day when it's more people-y so of course i have my mask with me and all the things. There's it's been an interesting day so far. Got a couple of errands done I needed to get done this morning and <clears throat> one of them was going to Dollar Tree Tuesday morning next door. It looks like it's closing and going out of business. Came home and our cleaning lady is helping with the house because with me with my asthma I'm not up to doing it anymore. Anyway, you didn't need to know that but there it is. Um, and the house is much bigger than the old one. She found a leak in the downstairs toilet. Like, yeah, we, she caught it just in time before it became a huge problem, thank goodness. So we've turned off the water to that toilet. We have a bucket underneath it. Thankfully, it looks like it's something that's a DIY fix. Our old house had plenty of bad leaky toilets. So it's not like we're not used to fixing things like that so we were headed to the hardware store tomorrow anyway but now i guess we're getting toilet parts on top of everything else it's friday morning july 31st and it's just after 10 a.m we are well we you and me we're walking to the mailbox i've got an etsy order that i'm gonna put out and i think the mailman's already come this morning so i'm gonna check the box we're starting on the garage reno today and some of the furniture we're getting rid of from the garage is leaving today. Um, including the antique teacher's or secretary's desk that was my father-in-law's. I'll put a picture right about here. Um, fun fact, he was a garbage picker before garbage pickers were fashionable. <laughs> and um, he was constantly bringing home furniture and artwork patio furniture house for like all kinds of stuff that he would find he was working as a gardener at the end of his life and he would drive around in his truck when he was done and garbage pick so i'm pretty sure that's where the desk came from originally he probably picked it up somewhere anyway i don't know if he'd be pleased with us for getting rid of it or not um it's a bittersweet moment getting rid of it but anyway we don't have any room for it and it needs to go on to a home where it's going to get used so and it's not the last of the things that we've moved all the way from california with us t that have got to go so uh it's just the beginning anyway that's getting picked up today i need to bring the mail in the house i need to move my car because it's right in the way husband's gonna have to move his car we're clearing the garage out today and I'm trying to empty it as much as we can so that we can start work on the floor. So I'll be back.
guys, I think I screwed up the camera again. You wouldn't know I'm a YouTuber and vlogger, right? <laughs> anyway, look at that empty spot behind me. We're working on that right there. Then we're gonna move that beast. Then we're gonna move that thing. Emptying the garage out so Fred can redo the floors in here and we can get that done. And then he's ordered new cabinets for his garage. So after the floor is dry, it'll take a few days to dry and cure. And then we're gonna take those off the wall and empty that off. And then hopefully in a few weeks, by the time we do all of that, the new cabinets will be here and we can get it all set up for him. Because of the current pandemic situation, the contractors who usually do the cabinet installation are not working right now. So it's gonna be a DIY project from start to finish. We haven't done one of those in a while. Not that we're not capable, <laughs> so it'll be fun. All right, now I'm all hot and sweaty, but I need to help him finish this. So I said earlier, we got the garage emptied and now we're in line at the DEQ, which is the Department of Environmental Quality. Good idea, yeah. I Good. don't know, it's the DEQ here in Oregon. It's where you go to get your car smog tested. Um, most countries and at least states in the US, you have to get your car smog tested to make sure it passes quality control um, before you can register your car. And we found out just today that my car renewal is up. So we decided to just not waste time and let's just do it now. We're out, we're near DEQ. So we'll wait in line and do that. Then we're gonna go to the hardware store and get the stuff for the garage floor. Then we're gonna get lunch and then we're gonna eat lunch. And after lunch, Fred's gonna um, start prepping the floor in the garage for painting it tomorrow, which yes, I'll film for you guys. Hopefully we do it and don't make a gigantic mess, but I guess we'll find out. All right. I'll be back. Do you hear the noise? He's out in the garage sanding and he's gonna be spending the rest of the afternoon, probably part of the evening, prepping the floor for painting it tomorrow. Um, so yeah, he doesn't need me to get in his way, so I'm gonna not. We're working on the garage, prepping it for painting it tomorrow. Bob is degreasing it. I've been helping him. I got my galoshes on. Um, and I looked up and hold on, I'll see. Two babies are eating dinner. Glad I filled up the bowls. They're just watching. Bob, scrub away. I'm scrubbing? Yeah. They don't seem to care? Nope, they don't care. They're eating, so they don't care. So anyway, she's trying to degrease the floor. We're doing what we can to prep the concrete for the epoxy paint coating thing that we're doing tomorrow. Anyway, it's pretty cool. That part, I mean, not the degree thing. <laughs> hey guys, day two of the garage reno. We're gonna start painting the floor. First, Fred's gotta blow all the pine needles that came in overnight out. And then I need to put paper over at least 12 inches of the bottom of the opening so we can hopefully keep them out while the paint is drying. I will be doing sort of a time-lapse kind of thing of the painting today and yeah, we'll see what happens. All right, wish us good luck. I'll be back. Yeah, the garage is drying and my purge box is overflowing again because I did some purging and you know, Fred is downstairs making my birthday cake because tomorrow's my birthday, but you'll see that in next week's vlog. Um, 
So yeah, so I we're not doing anything big. We're not even seeing the kids for my birthday because they were in California last week. So we are making them wait two weeks before they see us. And because of the pandemic. And uh, so we'll see them and celebrate with them next weekend. And um, we'll get them to help us with some of the garage stuff because Bob's cabinets might be in by then. We'll see. And in the meantime, when we can get to stuff, I will get Bob and or Polyus to help me get the pegboard up right there. Those paintings are gonna stay. Again, the shelves may go up on top of the pegboard. I don't know though, but I can't wait for the pegboard to be there because I love my little piece of pegboard. Where's the sewing desk? Can you even see it from here? Oh yeah, uh, yeah, back there in the corner, right there underneath that. That's a piece of Ikea, two pieces of Ikea pegboard with all my thread collection. I, I will love it. It works so well. And yeah, it's going to be good. Anyway, it's been quite a week. But you know, it's the pandemic. I don't know what to tell y'all. <sighs> Take a deep breath. That's all we can do. All right, that's it for the moment. I hope you guys have had a good one. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down below. Links for any relevant products, websites, Facebook groups, any of that stuff, it's down below. So check it out. Also ways to su support the free content here on, face uh, here on Facebook, here on YouTube and over in the Facebook art groups. So all your favorite creatives usually have a way to um, have you support them whether it's an Etsy shop or a Patreon or a PayPal tip jar or an Amazon affiliate link or something. So we would all appreciate you to use one of them if you can and if you would, not just mine. Mine are in the video description. If in your favorite creatives you can't figure out how to support the free content, ask them. I'm sure they have a way. Sometimes you just need to ask the right question. Um, so that's it. So I would love the support for YouTube and the free content over in fa the Facebook art groups, as I know they would too. So we would all appreciate that. Anyway, don't forget to stay safe, stay healthy, and stay creative. And go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. I'll see you next week. We'll start with my birthday. All right, I'll be back. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.